so let's get started. That was my extremely long intro. Okay. So let's start with breathing. The Pilates breath is the most important part. We're going to inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. You probably can't hear me exhaling, but you do want to hear some sort of noise as you exhale because it's more forceful than a passive sigh. It's like blowing out through pursed lips. If you'd like, you can start by connecting your body with the breath. So as I inhale, I'm lengthening through the top of the head. As I exhale, I'm drawing my abs in. As I draw my abs in, I sort of do a, what I call a vertical crunch. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, vertical crunch. So drawing again the abs, the belly button in towards the spine. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. Can you guys hear me from here? Anyone that heard me, a thumbs up? Yeah, okay, great. So the, the other thing is, um, as we continue doing this breathing, if I'm saying inhale and you happen to be exhaling, don't worry about it. Just keep breathing. All right, I'm gonna cue breath, but don't feel, the only time you know you're wrong is because you're holding your breath. All right, usually I say no one's wrong about anything, but in that case, yes, we don't want to hold our breath. Inhale and exhale. Good. And the other thing I wanna say is don't keep your head on the screen the whole time unless the screen happens to be in front of you because I do want your head and neck aligned with your spine. So if you're constantly looking sideways, that's not gonna be a great thing for your neck. So you can watch me for a few exercises and then realign your neck and do the next exercises. So we're gonna go ahead and roll down. So basically do as I'm saying, but not as I do, because I'm gonna be constantly looking over at you guys. So let's breathe, inhale and exhale. And the other thing is we're on our back, so it's kind of hard to see, uh, to constantly look up as well. So and hopefully you can find a place where you can hear my voice and follow along. So I'm inhaling through my nose, my chest will rise a bit. Exhale, my abdominals flatten. Inhale into the chest. Exhale, abs, abs go down. Inhale, chest rises. Exhale. Let's keep the imprints, so our lower back is going to touch the floor, providing stability there, and legs to tabletop, knees over the hips. Press those hands into the floor, nice and active. Exhale, right toes tap the ground, inhale. Exhale, left toes tap the ground, inhale. Now keep in mind the legs do not need to go all the way to the ground, you can do just a little bit of movement. As your knees move away from your chest or head, there's more work on the abs. It is more challenging to maintain imprints as your legs reach away. Now we're just warming up here, so we don't want to reach our legs really far away. We're gonna keep it close. You'll notice that if you have it too close, that you won't feel anything. So find what works for you. You wanna reach just a little, just a little far, far enough so that your abs wake up. Usually around 90 degrees is a good position, keeping the knees at 90 degrees. Okay, so that's the single leg lowering, and if that works for you, you can keep doing it, or if you wanna try the double leg lowering, you can start by doing, going halfway down. And then if you wanna go a little further, you can try going almost all the way to the ground, or all the way to the ground. Exhale, lower, inhale, lift, exhale, lower, good, perfect. So again, without keeping your neck turned on me, I would be looking up at the ceiling here. And let's do one more together, lower, lift, and then from here, let your heels drop to the ground, uh, to your butt, and then place your feet down, hip distance apart. That usually puts our feet in the right position for our shoulder bridge, which we're going to push into our heels, roll those hips up, straight line from shoulders, hips, and knees. Inhale, exhale, slowly roll down. 
I'm just going to lift my arms here so you can see my spine is articulating. I start with my tailbone, inch my way up one vertebra at a time until my shoulder blades are on the ground. I, I can lift my head if I want to, uh, which means the weight is on my shoulder blades and not the back of my head. And I soften from the shoulder blades and roll my way back down. So you don't need your arms up, I just wanted to show you my spine. Rolling the way up. Inhale, and then exhale, roll your way down. This is called articulation of the spine. Let's do one more. Inhale, and then exhale, squeeze your butts, push through those heels. You're pushing through the entire foot, but definitely through the heels. Inhale at the top and exhale. Good. We're going to lift the head, neck, and shoulder blades. This moves our rib cage toward the hips. Inhale, prepare, exhale, lift. So just until the head, shoulder blades are off the ground, our abs should be engaged, arms actively reaching. Inhale, hold, exhale, back down. Inhale, nod. Exhale, lift up. Now here on the inhale, if you want to lift a little higher, you can. And then exhale, relax. Inhale, look towards your knees. Exhale. I'm still looking at my knees. Inhale a little higher, more reach. Exhale, lower everything. Inhale, reset. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. We generally exhale during the exertion phase. So inhale, this is sort of our passive prep phase. Exhale, exert. Inhale, we can hold or we can lift again and then even though we're not exerting on the way down, you actually want to sort of think about the exertion because as we lift up against gravity, it's work. As we hold against gravity, it's work. And as we lower against gravity, it should be work because we're not just falling back down, relaxing everything, right? There's always work on the way up and on the way down. Now we're going to do an isometric. So that means we're holding our upper body up and neck and shoulders. You can keep your feet on the ground. You can have legs in tabletop, legs straight, or on the diagonal. I'm going to try to keep this engaged the whole time as working. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, ten. Inhale, 100 counts. Exhale, 20. Inhale, keep reaching. Exhale, 30. Inhale, exhale, 40. Inhale, exhale. 50. Feel free to bend your knees if you have your leg straight. You can always change your leg position. If you start with your knees bent, you can keep straighten it here. That's 70. Inhale. Exhale. 80. Inhale. Exhale. 90. Almost there. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. On to our stomach to warm up our spine. So this is the last exercise in our warm-up series. This is pretty much the same movement as the crunch, but instead of lifting the head, neck, and shoulder blades, we're lifting head, neck, and the front of the chest. So the top half of our rib cage will lift up, and I'm going to feel all along my spine here. For now, we're going to keep the tops of the feet on the mats, and I'm going to press into my forearms. Assistance. Inhale. Exhale, lower. Now pretend there's an apple under your chin. Don't let the apple drop. We're going to keep our head and neck aligned with the spine. Inhale, exhale. You can also exhale, lift, inhale, lower. Good. So the most common error I see is that everyone wants to look up and around as they lift their chest. We want to keep, again, that head and neck aligned with the spine for the safety of our neck. So that's why I say pretend to hold on to an apple and not let it drop. And the reason it's an apple or some sort of thing that creates space is because I also don't want you to jab it down into your chest like there's no space there. There needs to be some space. All right, let's do one more. And let's take our arms down and have a little more chest opening. So as we lift, you don't have to lift any higher. But what this does is it stretches open the chest, squeezes the shoulder blades. You still want to hold that apple underneath your chin. It's a great exercise for your posture. 
Notice as you come down that your shoulders round forward and hit the floor, separating the shoulder blades. So as you lift up, you want to do the opposite. Squeeze those shoulder blades together, actively reach arms to toes. Let's finish on the last one here. And then we're going to take our hands underneath our shoulders and press ourselves up and stretch, please. Every time we work our spine, it's important to work it, but it does get a little fatigued faster than everything else. It's because we don't often work our spine muscles. We work our abs so much more. Okay, so we're into our seated position again. I generally sit in the front half of my mat so that when I roll down, my head will be on the mat. Half roll back. This is one of my favorite exercises. It really demonstrates the whole of gravity. So we're here in a neutral spine, or as neutral as we can get. And then we're gonna roll halfway back. And here you should feel your abdominals, right? Uh, you wouldn't feel it when you're completely vertical. Inhale, lift. So remember when we were breathing in the warm up, we kind of did this exercise, but we didn't lean back. Notice that the shoulders have shrugged up towards your ears. We don't need that tension there. Inhale, lift, lengthen. Exhale. And roll back. All right, keep going. I'm just gonna. Come a little closer to the screen here and see what's going on. Looking great, everyone. <laughs> I see a bunch of people with Heather and you guys are all doing half rollback in sync and it looks super awesome. It's like synchronized Pilates, like synchronized swimming. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, so um, sorry, I got sidetracked. So we're going to add a rotation. Our ribcage rotates independently of our pelvis. Our pelvis is on the ground. It's not going to move. I'm going to take my right hand. I'm going to look at my right thumb and go as far back as I can, but not all the way down. Feel the work in the abs and then come back up. Now the left. Now as you do this, try not to bring the arms across the body. So only my one hand is going. Back. The other hand stays right in front of the shoulder. So that's the front view. Okay? And the reason why I want you to look at your thumbs is because it keeps your arm within range of your general head, neck, torso position. If some of you have really flexible arms, your arms can reach this far back behind you, but that's just your arm reaching. It has nothing to do with rotation. We want, to, we want to focus on the rotation, the rotation of the ribcage. Make sense? We're not just stretching the shoulder here, we're rotating. Uh, so everyone's kind of going at their own pace. So just make sure you do the equal number on the right side and the left side. So either finish up on the left side or do one more on the right and one more on the left. And then we're going to do the full roll up, which is a little more challenging. Feel free to use a little bit of momentum to get yourself up. So here we're going to straighten our legs. I like to flex my foot, keep my heels nice and heavy and squeeze my quadriceps. So the more active your legs are, the easier it is to get yourself up. So my arms here, oh, where's my bed? Um, biceps by the ears. To start, we're going to inhale, reach the arms up, lift head, neck, and shoulders. And then again, if you need a little bit of momentum, kind of throw your arms up and get yourself up. Good. Stretch. Inhale the way down. And using the abdominal strength, go slowly. Resisting gravity. There is work on the way down. If you come up quickly with momentum, you can still go down slowly. The end goal is to come up as slowly as you went down. So coming up slowly. And this is about spine articulation again, peeling yourself off the floor. I'm lowering to the floor one vertebra at a time. Active feet, lower back, mid back, shoulder blades, and head. Inhale, arms, head, shoulders, 
Exhale, spine and reach. So really use your arms for actively reaching. Your arms have weights and they can help pull you up. On the way down, it can assist in the lowering. Reach. I'm going to add a rotation. Again, our butt is stuck, our pelvis is stuck. So taking one arm, it doesn't matter which, you're going to keep the other hand reaching forward, okay? And just the arm reaches across to the opposite leg, creating that rotation. And then coming back down, let's do four on each side. So again, in my case, I'm just using my right arm and have my left arm already reaching toward my toes. I'm going to Throw my right arm across to the outside of the left leg, reaching to my left pinky toes. So I'm creating that rotation right across here. And I'm still using my abs because it's still a roll up, so a little bit of obliques. It sort of changes the exercise when you only have one arm. Exhale, dive. Now because you have one arm here, if you want a little more challenge on the roll down, you can reach the arms here, high, instead of down here. And see how that feels. Do one more. Reach arm right arm up and over to the left. And the option to lift it up high. Good. Let's switch arms. So four on this side. I do use my arms, both of them to reach on the way up. So here's my left arm. Reach up and then over. On the way down, I'm kind of just letting this arm go. Reaching this arm up. Try not to say left and right because everyone's probably got a different arm up. Inhale here, exhale, reach across the body. That's it. So just a variation on the roll up. Two more. Heels heavy on the mat. Inhale, exhale. Oh, I forgot to use this one. <laughs> Last one. Reach. Looking good. And after the roll up, you always gotta adjust your pants. Or at least I do. We're all the way back on the ground. Hug those knees in. So this is called the abs series now. We're gonna be really focusing on the abs. By the time we're done with the series, you should feel your abs very, very fatigued. Okay? At any point, you can put the head back down or keep it down. I'm going to try to have my head, neck, and shoulders up for this entire series as it does help with the imprint and help to engage the abs more. So I'm going to nod my chin. Eye gaze on my knees. Good. Extend one leg. Exhale. Inhale, switch. Exhale. Inhale, exhale. That was eight switches. Let's do a couple more. Two more switches. Hands behind the head. Support the neck. Elbows nice and wide. Add a very little rotation. Obliques. Towards the bent knee, we look. And exhaling on the twist, inhaling to cross midline. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Feel free to slow it down. It becomes more painful when you slow it down, but slow it down if you want more work. I wouldn't uh, recommend increasing the speed too much. Now, notice my feet angle is about 45 degrees. I'm not going very low. I'm not going super high. Feel free to experiment and see what works for you. See how it feels up here. See how it feels down here. Double leg stretch, legs to tabletop. I still have my head, neck, and shoulders up, but at any point, remember you can put it down. Exhale, reach. Biceps by the ears, legs at any angle. You can reach straight up to the ceiling. The farthest back your arms will reach will be the ears. So try not to reach so far behind the ears. Exhale, reach, inhale, return. Exhale, reach, inhale, return. 
Maintain imprint. If the legs are very low to the ground, you might feel your lower back lift up. It might be too stressful. So try to go a little higher. The great thing about Pilates is you can, it's your body. You can play around with all these different angles and you don't have to consistently pick the same angle. It's finding the challenge that works for your body. You wanna feel work in the abs without any strain in the lower back or neck. Good, last one. Good. Legs straight for scissors. Feel free to have a bent, bent knee if you have tight hamstrings. Even if you have a bent knee, you are gonna feel the hamstring stretch. Good, switch. Exhale. Inhale, switch. Exhale. If your head's on the ground, you're just still gonna reach as high as you can on the leg. Try not to grab directly behind that knee. That sometimes makes you bend it. So I'm trying to either grab right above that knee bend or right below it. Inhale, switch, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Four more on each side. Four. And three. Slow is always better, two. And one. How are abs feeling? Let's do one more exercise. So remember in uh, the beginning we did double leg lowering? This is the same thing, but legs are gonna be straighter. I'm reaching here, exhale, inhale, or if you want, you could inhale, exhale. I didn't say how much, how low you gotta lower it. Pick vertical and then go what, 70 degrees? It's your choice. Arms reaching, eye gaze on those knees, head, neck, and uh, head and neck tire, place your hands down on the ground and press into the floor. Okay? Try not to lose that imprint. Last three. Last two. Last one. Oh! Okay, we so deserve it. We so deserve to flip over and continue working, but just not on the abs. Giving our abs a break. Giving our abs a break. So we're going to do a uh, brush stroke. Now be careful with your shoulders. If you feel any sort of impingement or twinge as you circle, especially up, then feel free to circle more to the side. So start kind of at corners and then sweep back. Okay. So I'm going to have chest down, sweep forward, inhale, reach, lift the shoulders. I mean, lift the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades. Reach back. Lower here. Start over. This is called breast stroke. If you're ever in a pool and you want to do breast stroke, here it is. Uh, but obviously we're not kicking our legs. So you wouldn't be able to do breast stroke in a pool and not use your legs. This is about range of motion in the shoulder joint, as well as working the spine muscles. Where's your apple? Did you drop it? Good. Exhale, reach. Inhale, lift. Exhale. Do one more. Looking good. Great neck alignment. Okay, hands underneath the shoulders. We're going to find our stretch again. So, as we arch the back during spine work, we got to round the spine to stretch it. Stretching will always be the opposite. So for instance, to contract the hamstrings, we're bending the knee, we're pulling the heel toward our butt. So the best way to stretch the hamstring is to straighten the leg. That's why every time you straighten the leg, you feel such a hamstring stretch. All right, before we get back onto our back, I'm gonna do some outer thigh work. So Pilates focuses on the core musculature of our body, which is anything that attaches to the pelvis and the spine. So that includes all these muscles around our pelvis. This is called the pretzel. I don't know why, because pretzels don't really look like this. You're going to take your top leg, whichever it is, doesn't matter. Um, if you're mirroring me, uh, that would be your right leg. And you want to make sure it's nice and straight here at the hip. So if I pull my knee forward, now, I don't have a straight angle. 
I want to stretch this area back like I'm stretching my quads. And there goes my leg. And then I'm going to put the other foot onto my knee. So knee, foot, knee, foot. I guess I can try to show you the bird's eye view. I don't really know how to do that. All right. So from here, we're on our elbows. Don't get lazy and sink into your elbows. Strong through those elbows. After you're done, you're ready to lift. My top leg, which is my left, your right, is about 90 degrees up the knee. Whether you want to point or flex your foot, it's your choice. Now, I'm not lifting it and pulling it forward. I'm lifting it straight up and keeping that 180 degree hip angle, the open hip. If in doubt, reach your knee further back. I'd rather you accidentally reach too far back than to pull it forward. What to do with this hand? Okay. All right, let's pulse it. So instead of going all the way to the ground, we're gonna keep it up at the maximal height we can keep it, which is about hip height, and let it pulse. Oh yeah, I love to hate this. <laughs> you should feel it. And we're not quite done yet. Hold the leg up and push it back. Imagine the wall is right behind you, the wall is right behind me. I'm gonna put my footprint on the wall, but not from lowering my leg. I'm gonna keep my leg as high as I can and push it back, back, back. So I'm therefore stretching that hip flexor a little bit more, working the glutes, but all the while keeping that leg height, which means the outer thigh is working. Don't forget about the shoulder here. Stay lifted for four, three, two, and one. Okay, one thumbs up if you felt it, and two thumbs up if you hated it. Just kidding. <laughs> no, we don't need the second thumbs up. Let's do the other side. Oh, so you can set up up here too. Um, you can get down your elbows if you want. But again, that straight position. Everyone, please switch sides. Unless you have one favorite side that you care about and you just don't care about the other side. Knee, foot, knee, foot. Now this foot doesn't have to be there, but the reason I like to put it there is because it, it holds the leg accountable. Because if it was way up here, then this knee probably moves forward and you wouldn't even know. So what you do here is by putting that lower foot exactly creates the boundary, like straight up and down. You can tell if your leg has gone over the other foot. Does that make sense? You can tell if the knee has cheated forward. So that's what the purpose of that foot is. And then this arm again has no purpose. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. So we're starting to just lift and lower. This is the basic setup. Kind of get the feeling all right. Knee bent at 90 degrees. Foot can be flexed. It can be pointed. Watch the hip angle here. Stays open. I'm lifting my entire shin off the ground at the same time. So my, my knee isn't going higher than my toe and my toe isn't going higher than my knee. Sorry, I should have mentioned that in the first side. So my entire shin lifts up parallel. Now let's pulse it. Let's just get this over with. It's painful and we gotta do it, so let's just do it. I struggle with counting. So let it burn and then do like 10 more. I always say like, find your max, your limit, what you think is your limit, and then go a little bit beyond it, and then tell yourself, wow, I pushed beyond my limits. All right, I feel it. Let's kick the back wall. So push back. Now, think about the back, back, back. And as opposed to going back and then pulling forward, don't even think about pulling forward. Guess what, your body naturally is gonna pull forward on its own because it doesn't wanna stay back there. That's too much work. So every time you kick back, notice that your leg just kind of returns forward. It just kind of rebounds forward. So that's why all you have to do is think about going back, back, back. Make sense? Is there a hole in your wall yet? Kick, kick. All right, you feel it? You gonna go numb? All right, we don't want to go numb. Oh, that's it. That's it. So that's the outer thigh work. Uh, it's, we can't really do inner thigh work unless we have something to squeeze. So what we're going to do is um, lift our leg against gravity. 
So you can either put this top leg in front here, or you can put it back here. The only place you don't want it is right on top of your leg, because then you can't lift it. So here. Now you don't have to be propped up here. If, if your shoulders are fatigued, by all means, lay down, lay on your arm. I don't know, I, I personally feel more when the leg is in front than when the leg is in back. Okay, but here, this is the inner thigh to the arch of my foot. Pretend there is a really heavy object, like a cinder block, on the arch of your foot, and you have to lift it up against gravity. You gotta squeeze the entire length of your leg. If you don't think about it and you just kind of go up and down really quickly, you won't feel your inner thigh muscles. Think lift and lower while reaching the heel up. So I'm reaching the heel like I want to grow three inches. I've told some of you guys the story, but I never had any interest in teaching Pilates or doing Pilates until someone told me I would grow two or three inches doing Pilates. And I was like, great, I'm in. But then I realized it wasn't actually true. You wouldn't actually grow. It was more that you would have better posture and you stand up taller, so it looked like you grew two to three inches. Uh, but I stuck with Pilates anyways. Let's pulse it. Keep it high. Think up, 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 because your leg naturally wants to drop anyway, so you don't need to intentionally lower it. Lift up. Now you're really going to feel your inner thighs. See if you can keep your heel and toes at the same plane. So not heel higher than the toe or toe higher than the heel. Okay? So if you imagine like a center block or some object on it, you gotta, you gotta keep that object also flat. Oh, that's enough. Did you feel it? Yes? How are we doing? Did you feel your inner thighs? Okay, let's do the other side. What time is it? Yeah, I talk too much. Okay, so we got our other side. However you sit up on the first side, please do so the same. If you were on your elbow, fine. If you're on your arm down here, then please do it again. If you had your leg in front, do that again. If you had your leg in back, do that again. And then we're gonna lift up and down. Again, slow, with control. Activate the entire leg. If you really had a cinder block on that foot, you would need the entire leg strength to lift it. Gotta use your imagination here. Exhale, lift, inhale, lower. But again, as long as you're breathing in and out, doesn't matter what you do. So there's a lot of mind-body connection here in Pilates. I say that for really any exercise program. Even when you're doing boot camp, dance, anything, you gotta connect your brain to your body. If you're not thinking about the movement, that's when injuries can happen or exercise isn't as effective. So here we gotta focus on the inner thighs, Straightening the leg, quadriceps engaged. Our abs are actually still a little bit engaged. All right, let's pulse it. So pulsing is keeping the range of motion really small and not letting the muscle have a break. The muscles get a break when the leg goes all the way down. Here, this is the peak of the contraction and we're keeping it right there. It's all about the sensation. It's all about feeling that burn. So if you feel it within eight to ten reps, do a little, do like two or three more and then call it a day. If you need to do 16 to feel it, do 16. All right, so I feel it now, so I'm gonna do like four more. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, so what we haven't worked on um, is our butt, our glutes. So that's that was our inner thighs, our inner thighs, and now our butt. So we did a little bit in the warm-up. So I'm gonna do some uh, more glute ridges right now. Here we're not gonna articulate. We're gonna just lift and lower really quickly. Um, well, it doesn't really matter. Here's the combination. You're gonna lift, right leg goes up, doesn't matter which leg. I'm gonna flex the foot, I'm gonna drag it down like I'm scraping it along the wall. When my knees are next to each other, I'm going to point and lift back up again. All right, we're going to do that three times. We're going to go up, up, up. After the third one, we take the leg all the way down. All right, ready? So that means both hips are at the same height the entire time the legs are doing its thing. 
The remaining leg on the ground is doing all the work. All right, pick your favorite leg. Here we go. Lift the butt. Check that the hips are the same height. Good. Lift the right leg. Inhale. Flex. Exhale. Drag. Inhale, point lift. That's two. Exhale, drag. Inhale, point lift. That's three. And then you can bend the knee and take it back down. Good. Lower the hips. Lift the hips. Left leg goes up. Inhale, that's one. Exhale, drag the heel down. Slowly, till the knees are next to each other. All this is staying stable. Inhale, two, flex. Inhale, point, lift, three. Take the foot back down. We're gonna do that again. This time we're gonna do it four times. We're gonna lift four times, and we're gonna keep the hips up in between the leg switch. Of course, feel free to lower the butt. Take a break if you need. Inhale, prepare, exhale, lift. Inhale, exhale, flex. Inhale, point two. Exhale, flex and drag down. Leg very straight, quads engaged. Inhale, point three. We have one more. Inhale, point four. Exhale, lower the legs. Inhale, left leg goes up. That's one. Exhale, flex lower. Inhale, point two. Exhale, flex lower. Inhale, point three. Last time, exhale, four. Legs go down and we can lower everything. Good. Well done, hug the knees into the chest. Relax that lower back. Just roll side to side a little bit. Okay. Now we're gonna do this thing called rolling like a ball. If you're at a dead still here, the only way to come to a seating position is you start to create momentum. But use your abs. So I nod my chin, I lift my shoulder blades, and then I fall back. I lift my shoulder blades again. I crunch, relax, crunch, relax, crunch, relax, crunch. Oh, I almost made it. Crunch. I kind of equate it to like swinging, where you have to like kick in order to start the swing, and then you kind of relax, and you gotta time it again. So it is possible that if you use your legs like this, that you don't need your abs at all. So come back down again, try this one more time. Hold your knees in. Don't even think about using your legs. Use your abs. Crunch, hold that. Crunch, hold that. Crunch. I'm not using my legs. See how my legs stay at the same angle? I'm not doing this. Crunch, I don't care how many times it takes you, as long as you're feeling in your abs. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so rolling like a ball is one of those exercises where a lot of people are like, what's the point of it? I don't feel anything. Well, the reason why is because if you don't focus on the abs, you could just be rocking and rolling on your back. And yeah, it's true, you won't feel anything. It's a good exercise principle to learn though because you're using your abs to eventually come and to your B. All right, crunch here, but we're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna do this. We're gonna crunch, relax, crunch, and then when you get to your seated position, I want you to try to straighten your legs. Whether it's full straightening, partial straightening. The point is that you don't put your foot on the ground. Okay, let's try this. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. I think this one's it, I'm gonna make it up, and I'm gonna stop, decelerate. So there's all this acceleration coming up, and then what you want to do is use your abs to decelerate. Hug your knees in, fall back. Try it in one rock. Inhale, exhale, decelerate. How do we do? Let's try it again. You don't want to go back too quickly, right? You want to give your body just enough momentum and just enough crunch to come back. If you crunch too fast, you can go like this. Make sense? It's kind of a fun game I like to play. So we're here, we bend, we fall back, keep your chin tucked, because you don't want to hit the back of your head. Rolling like a ball, remember your spine needs to be curved, like a ball. Inhale, exhale, pause. Again, inhale, roll back, exhale, crunch, and reach. Inhale, 
Exhale. Crunch and reach. How are we doing? You know what? If, if you're like, oh my god, I didn't make it all the way up. What should I do? Nothing. Just keep crunching because your abs are still working this entire time. Do you take it three times? Crunch and then the third time you get out, great. It's still an exercise. All right. We feel good? Feel your abs? All right. The reason why I want to teach that is because it's very much part of the teaser. Very much a part of the teaser. Oh, we have three minutes left. Okay, so the teaser is in like a minute and then we'll stretch for two minutes. Okay, here's the teaser. The teaser is arms, head, shoulders. You gotta use those crunch muscles, extend the legs, and decelerate. So you wanna keep the legs out straight because it helps you come up in one, because you don't have the momentum of rolling like a ball, but then you're here. And then you straighten the legs, roll down, and bring the knees in. Arms, head, shoulders. Those are the first three things that come up. And then it's legs and crunch. Reverse it. Straighten the legs, roll down. Come back. Inhale. Arms, head, shoulders. Exhale, legs and arms. You don't have to keep pausing like I do. I'm just breaking it down. You can do it one and smooth. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Legs and stay straight or bent. Inhale, exhale. Do two more. Let me see. You guys are like, no, that's too much. <laughs> oh, there's a smile, good. Teasers should make people smile. Don't be afraid to use momentum. Kick those legs out. Kick those legs out. The important thing is, do you feel your abs? Good. So those of you that nodded, thank you for answering because I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know the answer to my question if I didn't get a response. And I know you all are muted, so you have to like answer like this. Okay, we can now stretch. My job is done. All right, come to your hands and knees. Wrists underneath shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And always, of course, must do the stretch of the spine. Tucking the tailbone under, dropping the head. The shoulders stay over the wrist, no matter the position of my spine. So I'm not like shifting back when I arch and leaning forward when I round, or I'm not, ramp, you know, pushing back, right? None of this shifting. Let's keep the shoulders over the wrist, the hip over the knees and just get movement in our pelvis, spine, head and neck. So if you imagine from the top of your head through your tailbone is your spine, you wouldn't want to round your back and keep your head up because it's part of your spine, it needs to come down. All right, and you also want, wouldn't want to do this where you're, you're, you're arched, your tailbone's up, but your head's still dropped. You want to keep sort of that nice curve, that smile curve. And then the frown, I don't like to say frown, so I say rainbow. This is the rainbow. And this is um, the smile. I, I know people also call it cat cat. Good, let's find neutral for a second. Good, so this is important here. We're gonna stretch our inner thighs by reaching one leg to the side. If you don't feel the stretch, then just turn my body a little bit. Then you can sit your butt back a little bit, and then you should probably feel your inner thighs. Okay, there's a lot of ways of stretching the inner thighs. You can do the straddle splits, things like that. Reach the other leg out to the side. You don't have to turn or anything, just reach it to the other direction. How are we doing? How are we doing? Good, good. Okay, we're going to stretch our quads. Just a little bit. 
Um, but really what I like to focus on are the hip flexors. So when we're sitting for hours and hours a day, we're sitting in a chair and our hips are bent at 90 degrees. That means our hip flexors are in a shortened state. So it's important to actually stretch the hip flexor if we're sitting at our homes all day. Pilates is not just about posture, lengthening, strengthening, um, balance, symmetry, alignment, all that good stuff. You don't have to flip around like this. You can actually just face the back. It's okay if you turn your back to me. It's okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So it's, it's not just about uh, posture, but it's really about how your right and left halves are balanced. Because we, we are right-handed or left-handed, and because of that, we would be dominant in one side. Thank you so much for joining me. Just sitting up nice and tall, reminding ourselves what good posture feels like. It, it can feel quite foreign to us because this feels very normal to us. Notice that because of my curved spine, my head and neck is now out of alignment, right? Remember that cat-cow uh, demonstration I said where you want to imagine your head and neck is all part of your spine. So the, the best way for our head and neck to be in line with our spine is that our spine is straight and we're staring straight ahead. Can you imagine if we type like this all day? Yeah, I can't either because I can't imagine myself doing it. But that doesn't mean we're going to think about it and try. Thank you so much for coming to Matt Pilates, and I will see you next week. Okay, thank you.